Tally ho fellow flight nerds, this is Ben Johnson at FlightNerdAirForce.com. Uh, before I start today's video, I just wanted to let you know that we have our Flight Nerd Air Force community called the Main Hangar Community. Uh, we are working on filling that up, and it is a free community that you can go and sign up to. Uh, get information from me. Uh, all things that are exciting and fun about aviation uh, are there in our free community. Uh, the link to that community is going to be uh, down below in the description below this video. Uh, today, what I wanted to do was talk about something called a stall, an airplane stall. What does that mean when an airplane stalls? Uh, basically, what happens when an airplane stalls is that we put the airplane in an attitude that makes the air moving over the surface of the wing break up, kind of come apart in such a way that the airplane stops flying. Uh, and there's a number of situations where this can happen. We have something called a power on stall and a power off stall. Uh, as well as an accelerated stall. Power on stalls tend to happen, the most dangerous situation that they can happen in is when you are in a takeoff attitude. You're in high power, you're trying to take off and climb and get some alt altitude, and uh, you end up putting it in a power on stall sort of situation. A power off stall is what happens uh, when you're in approach to land, the most dangerous situation anyway. Uh, and it's dangerous because you're combining the stall with the reality that you're still at a low altitude and relatively close to the ground. Um, and then an accelerated stall can happen when you are in a turn and it really can happen at any kind of airspeed. So let's talk a little bit about what it means to stall. First of all, what I'm going to do is uh, we are climbing or we are in our plane here, our Cessna 172, and we are at, as you can see here on the instruments, we are at about 3000 feet. Um, and about a hundred knots and what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna pull the nose of the airplane up and I'm going to I'm going to do a power on stall first and I'm gonna pull the nose up and we're gonna lose a little bit of airspeed get our airspeed down and then I'm going to put the throttle forward uh, to give us that power on part of it and you will see that the nose is gonna come up you'll hear the stall warning indicator go okay I'm gonna put the power up and I'm gonna pull the nose up we are full power Pulling the nose up, pulling the nose up, pulling the nose up. You see, here's the stall horn, you can hear that. And then, oh, you see it break. And you can kind of see there, one of the things that happened was it broke to the left. The airplane tipped slightly to the left. What happened is the plane was setting up to uh, get itself into a, a spin. This is what happens when an, an airplane spins. You get it into a stall, the nose drops, and actually one wing tips off to one side or the other. Um, let's do that one more time so you can see a power on stall. So we're going to pull the nose back, we're going to lose some airspeed, and then we're going to go to full power, and we're going to keep pulling the nose up, pulling the nose up, pulling the nose up. Okay, going to full power, nose up, nose up, nose up, nose up. You see the airspeed bleeding off, airspeed bleeding off, airspeed, airspeed, airspeed. Stall horn, stall horn, uh, and we broke to the left again, and I'm going to let it keep going. And you can see we end up in a bit more of a spin. I'm going to back the throttle off so we don't overspeed the airplane. We're going to add opposite rudder, so in this sense we went, and this time we went, we broke to the left, so we're going to add right rudder to correct that. Okay, so that was a power on stall, and you can see we lost about 500 feet on that in part because I let it, um, I let the stall go for a little bit. We lost about 500 feet. So we're going to climb a little bit again, pick up some altitude, and then this time we're going to do something called a power off stall. All right, we are almost back to 3,000 feet of altitude, and we're going to do something this time called a power off stall. Again, this is what can happen uh, when you're on approach to land and you're trying to make the runway, for example, and you have the power off and you try to pull the yoke back to keep and maintain your altitude and not lose as much altitude uh, without having enough power in. So what we're going to do is we're going to slow down. We're within the white arc and we're going to drop 20 degrees of flaps. And then we're going to uh, pull the power back to idle. And we're going to pull the nose back and hold the nose, 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 pull it back, pull it back, pull it back, pull it back. Get a stall warning, come on, and the stall breaks. Now the first thing we want to do is let the nose drop and build some airspeed, and then pull the nose back. 
There we go. Pull the nose back up. We want to be very careful. We don't overspeed the airplane when that happens, when it breaks, um, by adding a bunch of power while we're heading in a downward direction. That was a power, power off stall. Uh, that was a pretty dramatic power off stall. The next thing we're going to do is show you an accelerated stall. See if we can get one of those to work here. Accelerated stall happens when we are in a turn, and the turn itself ends up increasing our the g-force on the plane so that we end up uh, get my flaps back up here it increases the g-force of the plane so that we end up with a higher stall speed on the plane so I'm gonna just enter a turn here and pull back hard on the stick there you go you hear that stall horn kicking in and it is possible in a situation like this to just pull the nose back and turn hard, turn hard, turn hard. There you hear the stall indicator. Way up at a higher speed than we normally would be at. Okay. We're not going to get it to totally break in this situation, and I really don't want to crash right now. Uh, because, in part, I do want to show you what's going on. So I'm going to climb up a little bit here, show you why these stalls happen. Okay, so the question is, why does a stall happen? Uh, and to understand why a stall happens, we need to understand what happens in normal flight. Uh, when we're flying through the air, the air, the plane is actually moving forward, but that is causing the air around the plane to move over the surface of the wing and under the surface of the wing at the same time. When the air moves over the surface of the wing, this curved surface of the top of the wing, it forces it to speed up and as a result creates a low pressure zone on the top of the wing. That low pressure zone is what gives the airplane its lift. When we are flying through the air and that air is moving over the top, that low pressure zone is helping us stay in the air. When we increase the angle of attack like this, what happens is the air that comes at the wing uh, is going over the top of the wing, but instead of sticking nice and smooth to the surface of the wing, it ends up coming over the surface of the wing and then creating eddies that spin and twirl and make circles over the surface of the wing. And rather than getting that nice smooth, smooth area of low pressure on top of the wing, which is all of our lift, we just end up with the same pressure on top basically that's uh, below. And we lose all that lift that we have been gaining by having a nice smooth uh, flow of air over the surface of the wing. That's called laminar flow. We lose our laminar flow and we get eddies of air that just spin and burble and it just creates a that we lose that low pressure zone on the cert on the top of the wing and as a result we lose the lift that kept us up in the air. That is what in the end ends up producing a stall. The thing that produces the spin that we saw earlier when the plane broke to the left after we stalled is when one wing stalls before the other. So one wing stalls, loses the lift, it starts to fall, but the other one still has a little bit of lift left in it and it actually lifts up and makes the plane twist and then uh, fall in a sort of a turning motion at the same time. So that is how we get uh, a stall and a spin. I hope that helps you understand a bit of how stalls work. Um, they are, uh, they're not the situation that you're always looking to get into unless you're doing aerobatics. They can be dangerous if they happen in an environment where you are near to the ground, but they are recoverable. You actually can recover from them. Early on in the early days of flight, like in the Wright brothers and things, uh, those guys were convinced that stalling was would end up killing you, that they were just unrecoverable. But that's just not the truth. We know now that uh, we can recover from stalls. Um, we can't get over them. And the way we do that, in a way like I just did right there, is that you let the nose drop, you push the nose down just enough, uh, you bring the power back so you're not diving with power on, and you add, if you ended up starting to spin, you add rudder in the opposite direction of the direction of turn. So like we did every time there, we, the airplane stalled and broke to the left. We started to spin to the left. So we're going to point the nose down and get some airspeed up and then add some right rudder to counteract the left spinning tendency of the plane. Or if we were to break to the right, we would add left rudder to counteract that. 
the worst thing you can do, there's two really bad things to do if you're trying to recover, is to hold the stick back, to pull the yoke back. Because what you're doing there is you're holding it, continuing to keep it in that stalled condition. And the next bad thing you can do is to try to use the ailerons, to use the yoke or the stick left or right to try and fix it. So if I broke to the left and tried to turn using right L, uh, ailerons to correct, you actually are going to make the stall worse. So you got to use your rudder in the opposite direction of the spin to get yourself out of that spin. So I hope that all makes sense. Uh, helps you understand a little bit of what a stall is, why it happens, and uh, how to avoid them. You need to keep your airspeed up above the stall speed uh, that you have on the aircraft. Um, and listen for that stall horn. You start to hear that thing chirp, get your nose pointed down, uh, get your airspeed up, add some power if you need to, and you're going to be okay. Um, and again, if you get into one, it's possible to recover from them as well. So again, uh, this is Ben Johnson from FlightNerdAirForce.com. I'd love to, again, invite you to uh, click the link in the description below to come and join our free online community of aviation enthusiasts uh, in our main hangar community. Uh, come on over. It's free. Sign up and uh, you get lots of posts and information from me and uh, we try and um, really encourage engagement and, and in interaction between folks who really love aviation discussing the things we love the best. Okay, uh, this is Ben Johnson from FlightNerdAirForce.com. Keep flying.